A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escort had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up in the, in the uh, Arapagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you're well religious. For as I walk around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What, therefore, you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions, so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he's not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, and even some of your poets have said, For we too are his offspring. Since therefore we're his offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art or imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent, because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice. Through a man he is appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection from the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear about this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and become believers. Among them was Dionysus, a member of the court of the Aragopus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all you angels, praise him all your all you his host. Let the kings of the earth and all people, the princes and the judges of the earth, young men too, and maidens, old men and boys. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his majesty is above earth and heaven. He has lifted up the horn of his people. But be this his praise from all the faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the woman close to him. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Fabiscum, Lexio Sancte, Evangelii Segundum, Johannum. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he'll speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I've told you, he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so... We are anticipating the ascension of our Lord. And just kind of like to tease you, uh, Mass, for this Sunday, we're going to talk about the Eucharist on the Feast of the Ascension because there is a connection between the Eucharist and the Feast of the Ascension. I'll explain to you on Sunday uh, exactly what that is. And then, of course, uh, we are going to move towards Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
And Paul tells us, all right, that, and Jesus tells us, I'm sorry, Jesus tells us, although Paul uh, said this too, right, that I can't give you food, I, I need to give you milk, I, I need to start you off small and then and then give you more and more and more and more. And Jesus is saying the same thing, right, I have more to tell you, but you cannot bear to hear it. And of course, this is this is the, the theological discourse. This is the Last Supper. Uh, but he's told them over and over and over again, the Son of Man must be persecuted, must be crucified, must die, and will rise again. Jesus was not shy about that. And again, I, I'm thinking about how confused, how overwhelmed the apostles must have been at this time, uh, to the point where if Jesus was really going to explain to them the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit, then them spreading the gospel to the entire world, even though Jesus says that's going to be your job, right, to proclaim the gospel to the whole world. It would have been more than they could handle, right? Now, they knew that they were going to die martyrs except for John. They knew that. Uh, and that's more of what was probably overwhelming for them. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Things can get overwhelming for us. There's no doubt about it. With the evil in the world, the things that are going on in the world, the things that are going on in the church, the things that maybe are going on in our families, our own trials and tribulations apart from the cultural issues, um, things can get overwhelming. But we need to settle ourselves down. We are not in the same situation as the apostles were during the theological discourse, during that night of the Last Supper, during that night, uh, during that period of time where they were anticipating the coming of the Holy Spirit. We are not. The Holy Spirit's already come to us. Jesus has already told us everything. We've already been confirmed in the faith. We're already sacramental people, right? Uh, we need to just sort out what is beneficial to our spiritual life and what is beneficial to our eternal salvation and what is not. And this is the evil one wants us to be overwhelmed with everything that's going on. But what is our grace, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Really, that is the, that is the, the, the reality. What is our grace? Do we ever ask the Holy Spirit to give us clarity in our spiritual life. Do we ever do that? Do you do that? I do it all the time. I ask Jesus, Lord, uh, make your will for me clear and then give me the strength to do your will. And ask him for the strength to do his will. And ask him for clarity of his will. It, it, it has to include the Holy Spirit. And we need to keep it simple, my brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why I talk to people time and time again about what is on the final exam. How will we be judged? What is our grace in life? Is our grace in life to straighten out the Pope, to straighten out the church, to straighten out our country, to put Biden on the straight and narrow? To uh, end all these attacks against life, marriage, and family? Now, our, 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 our work, the will of God for us, is first of all personal, personal sanctification. To live our lives in such a way each day in a state of grace. That first of all, we can see clearly that we have the strength to do God's will for us. That we can recognize Christ in, in all those who Christ uh, 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 leads to our care, that we, that we grow in patience, that we grow in understanding, that we grow in charity, right? That we grow in virtue. That is it. Then meanwhile, the evil one's trying to distract us with, with all these things that are not our grace. And so this is what it means by being filled with the Holy Spirit, that we have this laser focus on our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have this laser focus on our eternal salvation, on our heavenly home, right? On being Jesus and seeing Jesus and all those who Jesus entrusts to our care each day. That is it. And so that is the more I have to tell you. But the more I have to tell you is easy to digest. 
right? Because we are not in the same situation as the apostles. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the sacraments. We have the church. We have the, all that Jesus taught, right? We have the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is come and gone. Yes, we're memorializing Pentecost next Sunday. Not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday. The Pentecost has come and gone. We have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has not left us orphans. We have the Eucharist. We have the sacrament of confession. We have everything we need to have clarity, to have strength, to have understanding, right? The fruits of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let us rejoice, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and let us be excited. Let's anticipate the coming of the Holy Spirit, but also understand that the Holy Spirit is already here. And let's sort through all the nonsense, all the distractions, all that the evil one is trying to do to discourage us, dissuade us, and see the essence of truth that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the simplicity of our faith. Stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused on our heavenly home. Invoke the Holy Spirit each and every single day. Invoke the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints and my brothers and sisters in Christ. We will have the peace that Jesus promised us. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic.